Hi, good evening and welcome to the Scottish Health Awards 2020. This evening is all about recognising the outstanding contributions that you have all made to healthcare over the last year. Our 53 finalists are a testament to the remarkable commitment and devotion that is given to patients across our NHS and partner organisations day in and day out. So what a year it's been. Um, it's been a learning year for me, Fred McCauley. Delighted to be your host again. Uh, what have I learned this year? Well, uh, that the bottle bin has been too small. Uh, it got so bad in the Macaulay household, we started to use the garden waste bin for bottles, but only the ones we've been drinking outside. Uh, I've also learned that passing wind and trying to tell your wife that you're just testing your sense of smell doesn't wash. So 2020 has been a year that nobody will forget, and we are delighted to be celebrating the achievements of our health and care workers and volunteers here tonight. This year, we received 896 nominations. Extremely difficult for our panel of judges to select the finalists in each of the award categories. We hope you enjoy the virtual awards and be sure to use hashtag Scott Health Awards to spread the word and follow the action. Before we move on to the awards, we've got a couple of people who'd like to say a few words. Let's take a look. Good evening and I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Scottish Health Awards 2020. Run by the Daily Record, it is always an extraordinary event honouring the unsung heroes of the National Health Service in Scotland for their incredible dedication and commitment to saving and transforming lives. This year's ceremony is unique, but then this has been a year like no other for all of us, and especially for our finalists. While our NHS and social care sector has long been celebrated, eight months ago, few of us could ever have imagined the challenges the staff would face. Almost every one of those days, these brave men and women quite literally put their lives on the line, made the toughest of decisions and worked gruelling hours, sometimes away from their own loved ones, to keep us safe. COVID-19 may have defined this year, but has also underlined just how special every NHS worker, from consultants, doctors, nurses and paramedics, to pharmacists, porters, office staff and cleaners really are. And while the virus may have dominated headlines, tonight you will also hear the incredible stories of NHS and social care staff who made lives better, sometimes in small but hugely significant ways, all in the shadow of COVID-19. Some of their stories will take your breath away, others will reduce you to tears, but they all celebrate and affirm the care, compassion and dedication of the people who work within our health service. We received an incredible 896 nominations from across the country and whittled those down to a set of finalists across 16 different award categories, including doctor, nurse, leader, team, volunteer, midwife, support worker, mental health and innovation, to name just a few. It also includes a special People's Choice Award, open to the public vote to specifically recognise individuals and teams who've responded so magnificently to the challenge of caring for people during the pandemic. So while we may not be together, our very special virtual event, which also marks the 72nd anniversary of the health service and social care system, is more important than ever. And this year, it doesn't matter whether you're dressed up or in your pyjamas. I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to our event partners, NHS Scotland and the Scottish Government and all our category sponsors. But I'm sure you will join me in the biggest thank you to each and every finalist. They are the people we clapped for every week in our doorsteps and now it's time to honour them officially. And now I'd like to introduce Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport, Jean Freeman. It's a real pleasure to welcome you all to the Scottish Health Awards 2020. This is the third year I've joined you as Cabinet Secretary and like every year, I know that tonight we're going to celebrate some of the very best in our NHS in Scotland. There's never an easy year in health and social care. Every single day, you and your colleagues work so very hard with skill and compassion to do your very best. And tonight, as we come together to recognise just some of that outstanding effort, across the country, in hospitals and ambulances and communities, your colleagues will be working again to deliver care. They'll work beyond their shift. They'll do what they need to do to keep people safe and cared for. 
I am so very privileged to be your Cabinet Secretary. But this year has been tough like no other, and the pressures and the demands continue. The 72nd year of our NHS and the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife has asked an extraordinary amount from health and social care staff. In responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, you and your colleagues across health and social care, carers and volunteers have demonstrated the most outstanding commitment to keeping people safe and caring for those who needed it. You've done that whilst having your own worries and anxiety about coronavirus, just like everyone else, and many of you have been affected directly by the harm and the death this virus can cause. You've done not only that, you've found new and innovative ways to deliver both COVID and non-COVID care, always keeping the person at the centre of your work and continuing to provide a range of essential services in new and innovative ways. As we approach winter, I know how much tougher this all feels. You're tired and in some ways, it's harder to face the coming pressures because we know what they feel like. I can't do your job and every day I'm conscious that I can only know a fraction of how it feels for you. But I promise you this, I will do all I can to help you. The People's Choice Award this year allows us to recognise just a fraction of the work that people have been doing to respond to the pandemic and you've had the chance to vote for your favourite. Tonight, we'll find out who that is. This year's awards attracted more than twice as many nominations than in any other year, and there's no doubt that people feel a huge sense of gratitude towards those who've responded so magnificently. Responding to the pandemic has featured heavily across all of the award categories. The finalists in this evening's awards are exceptional in their fields, and I want to congratulate them all and all those who've been nominated. Let me also thank the Daily Record and their events team and all those involved in delivering the awards this year. The corporate communication team at the Scottish Government, the award category sponsors, the shortlisters and judging panel who had a massive task this year, to all those who took time to nominate and to vote in this year's awards. And of course to Fred for agreeing to be our host this evening. But most of all, thank you to you for joining us this evening. More than anything or anyone, I want to thank all of you and your colleagues across Scotland for your skill, your expertise, your resilience and your compassion. You are what makes our health and care services what so many of us are proud of. Please enjoy the evening and know just how much all of you matter. Thank you very much, Lorna, and to you as well, Jean. Now, we don't want to keep you waiting any longer. Let's get on with the awards. And first up is the Support Worker Award sponsored by Unison Scotland. Let's have a look at the finalists. Support Worker Award. Scott Broadley, Senior Key Support Worker, Cornerstone, Lanarkshire. Scott supports people with mental health issues who often find it hard to understand what's going on during a pandemic. He works tirelessly to keep the people he cares for calm and relaxed, helping them to grasp what's going on and why everything's upside down just now, and keeping in contact with those who are shielding. Ashley McGee, Clinical Support Worker, Speech and Language Therapy, Royal Victoria Hospital, NHS Tayside. In her 13 years as support worker to the Speech and Language Therapy team for the elderly, Ashley has given 100% every day. While shielding during lockdown, she made welfare calls to patients to see how they were coping and answered their questions, all the while offering compassion and support. Libera Rena Vickers, Clinical Support Worker, Main Recovery, Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh, NHS Lothian. Libera is a compassionate, hardworking team player who always goes the extra mile for patients and the team. Told she couldn't meet patients face to face during the pandemic, she was determined to help and found herself a job ensuring areas were cleaned regularly and supporting the well-being of overwhelmed staff by listening to them and providing tea, yoga and hand massages. Presenting the Support Worker Award from category sponsor Unison Scotland is Chair Tom Watterson. 
Unison Scotland Health Committee are once again delighted uh, to sponsor the Support Worker Award, award for ordinary people doing an extraordinary job at an extraordinary time. And I'm delighted to announce the winner, Ashley McGee. And Ashley McGee is with us now. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Fred. How are you? I'm very well. I should be asking you how you are, though. I'm well. I'm well. I'm at work at the moment. You are? Oh, well, we'll try not to be too long then. Um, so, you know that you're the winner. Am I? You are! Yes! Congratulations! <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, not, um, just, um... not just the winner, but the first of the night. So, uh, it's a delight to, to, to say congratulations to somebody in this odd year. And I, I want to ask you personally how you've been. I've been really well, uh, Fred. Uh, part of the work that I did over COVID, I was actually shielding at home. Right. Um, my colleagues were here on the front line and uh, I thought I'd better chip in and, and find something to do that was productive and that would help people. So I'm absolutely delighted. I'm shocked, but ah. I'm absolutely delighted. Well, that's <laughs> great. And, uh, you know, like so many of the winners that we're going to hear from tonight, uh, you're playing it down, but uh, it's a great thing that you've done. And, and how are things in Dundee in general? Things in Dundee uh, seem to be quite stable at, at the moment. Um, we're, we're paused, ready maybe for the second wave, uh, but I've got every faith in my colleagues here in NHS Tayside and particularly in my own team, who, who are a great bunch. who faced a lot of challenges over the past few months, but, but we're ready. OK, now, uh, so we would like being back on the radio. Is there anybody that you'd like to particularly mention? Yes, I'd like to mention the Speech and Language Therapy Adult Acquired Service here in Dundee. Uh, we cover Angus, Dundee and Perthshire. Uh, they're a great team and uh, they support me as much as I support them. Ashley, many congratulations. I'm sure there's going to be a huge virtual round of applause all around the country. I'll lead it. I'll be the only one you can hear lightly, but well done again. <laughs> Ashley McGee, our first winner of the night. <laughs> We now move on to the Innovation Award, sponsored by NHS Research Scotland and Scottish Health Innovations Limited. Let's have a look at the finalists again. Innovation Award. Paul Swinton, Air Ambulance Paramedic with the Scottish Ambulance Service, and Neil Sinclair, Assistant Medical Director for the Northern Ireland Ambulance Service. Paul and Neil invented Structure Critical Airway Management, SCRAM, to deliver safe, timely and well-governed pre-hospital emergency anaesthesia and tracheal intubation. This innovation reduces the time it takes to prepare equipment by nearly a third, which can have a significant impact on the outcome for critically ill or injured patients. The ScotCap Evaluation Project Team, Digital Health and Care Innovation Centre. The Scottish Capsule Programme, ScotCap, has pioneered an alternative to traditional colonoscopy to test for gastroenterology symptoms. The colon capsule endoscopy, CCE, procedure involves swallowing a capsule the size of a pill that contains a digital camera. It's highly accurate with the potential to be cost effective, less invasive and more acceptable to patients than existing procedures. We create COVID-19 project team, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. When the pandemic broke out, the team realised the importance of a secure cloud-based video service to send messages to patient families and to receive videos from patients to allow remote clinical care. They have improved care in adult, paediatric and neonatal intensive care units and ensured neurology services could be provided remotely. Worthy finalists all, but to announce the winner from the category sponsor, we've got Executive Chairman Graham Watson. Hello, I'm delighted to be presenting virtually the Innovation Award on behalf of Scottish Health Innovations and NHS Research Scotland. The coronavirus pandemic has been a true test for NHS Scotland, but the ability to adapt and innovate has helped protect the NHS while accelerating new ideas and innovations to improve patient care. This year, more than ever before, recognising the exceptional talent and commitment of health and social care staff 
throughout Scotland is vital. I am delighted, therefore, to announce that the winner of the Innovation Award this year is the vCreate COVID-19 project team. And we're joined by the vCreate COVID-19 project team and on screen, two or three people there, but I'm going to speak firstly to Aileen McIntyre. Hi, Aileen. Hi, Fred. I just, I just about pronounced Aileen correctly there. Uh, I stumbled <laughs> over it and my wife's called Aileen. I should, I should know it oh, by now. Oh, you should know it then, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you are the winners. Uh, it's my, my pleasure to advise you that you've, you've won the Innovation Award. Many congratulations. Well, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so tell me a wee bit about it, Aileen, and then I'll speak to Neil and Samir as well. OK, so the vCreate project has been going on for a few years now uh, within GGC. Um, Neil Patel, who's on the call here today, has been one of the lead clinicians in introducing the vCreate software into the neonatal unit within Glasgow and scaling that up to all neonatal units within Scotland. Um, that's gave patients, uh, parents rather, the opportunity to actually see their child when they've been in the, the, the neonatal unit um, and build that connection and keep in touch with how the care is going. Uh, in response to COVID, there was an opportunity to scale that up um, and we identified two different use cases. The first was the ICU units for patients who were in intensive care and not able to interact with families and visitors. Um, and also turning it on its head for the clinicians to interact with the, the families of the patients who were in the unit at a time when it was convenient and to, to reduce the number of phone calls coming into the unit. Um, so that was done. That was a rapid scale up throughout um, March and April, as you can expect, uh -huh. um, when the wards were very, very busy. Um, and Katrina, who's just joined on to the call, was lead in, in, in instrumenting that through the ICU units. One of the other use cases was in the neurology department, and we recognised that children who were having seizures weren't able to come into hospital and have that uh, investigated. So there was a delay in them starting treatment and a delay in diagnosing them and getting them on the proper um, pathway within the unit. Um, so we introduced uh, the, almost like the opposite of vCreate here, where parents or patients were uploading videos of a seizure and allowing clinicians such as Samir to be able to investigate whether it was a seizure or what was the most appropriate treatment for them to save them having to come into the, the unit, the hospital. Well, I said I was going to speak to uh, Neil first, but since you've yeah. mentioned Samir and the neurological, uh, okay. you know, people having seizures uh, like that, how difficult was it trying to make the diagnosis remotely? Uh, it's, it's incredibly difficult because uh, we rely in neurology. Neurology is all about how the body functions. Your brain is there to control the body and what it does. So you need to be able to see people and you need to be able to examine them. And also, particularly when they're having attacks, actually see the attacks. And in the past, families have been really good about taking videos of episodes, particularly of children. Um, and that is really helpful for, for making a diagnosis. Uh, and we didn't have any secure way of sending videos into the hospital. So families in the past have brought them up to clinics, but even that wasn't as, as good as the system we've got now, which is a family can be registered for the system. They can upload a video. We can have a look at it almost immediately. We can then get back to the family and say, uh, this is an epileptic seizure, you need to come up to hospital, get appropriate investigations, tests, treatment started, or very often we can reassure the families and say, don't worry about this, this is, this is particularly in young babies, a very normal behaviour. So uh, it's, been, it's completely transformed the way we work and it's spread now to all the adult uh, and paediatric neurology centres in Scotland and is now going into Great Ormond Street Hospital in England, the Evelina Children's Hospital, Sheffield, loads of other hospitals all around the UK and potentially internationally. That's so this is really exciting for us and the innovation team. That's no better accolade than uh, for it to be picked up by, by other people. And Neil, um, you know, for a lay person like myself, when the, we were in the initial stages of the first lockdown, uh, the contact or the, or the lack of contact rather uh, between patients and family seemed to be critical. And, and well done to you for scaling it up uh, for COVID so quickly. How, how soon did you have to make that decision that you realised it was essential? Well, I think we already knew from the use of it in the neonatal unit 
you know, it, how important it could be for families to be able to receive a video of their baby when they couldn't be with them. And uh, we'd already worked closely with, with Recreate to help to spread that, that technology nationally. So w in our hearts, we understood how important that could be when families were separated in other ways and, and by COVID. So as soon as we heard those, those really troubling stories of, of patients in ICU really sick being separated from their families, we, we, we realized the potential of the technology to help them in that situation as well. And it was working with Katrina and her colleagues in the adult intensive care settings that we were able to rapidly scale it with support from, from the Scottish government and, and really importantly from the innovation teams throughout Scotland to get it into the ICUs really quickly. And again, we saw the same response from, from patients and families in that setting, just helping to make that connection but also helping the clinical teams to connect with the families when they couldn't do that in person as well. So it, it's, it's been really powerful for us to, to see that impact and to see the benefits scaled to, to, up to other settings. Well, many congratulations. And I know there are other people involved uh, in the team as well. Please pass on our thanks and congratulations to them. Our Innovation Award winners, the Sea Create COVID-19 project team. And I do the round of applause. It's hardly a round, it's just me. But well done, guys. Thank you. Next up, we have the Volunteers Award. Let's hear about the finalists. Volunteers Award. Helen Hagen, Volunteer, Children's Ward, Victoria Hospital, NHS Fife. A former nursery nurse, Helen began volunteering within the Children's Ward in 1984. Sadly, she died last year, aged 93, having continued in her role as a play volunteer until the end. With her kindness and care, she helped make the hospital warm and welcoming for children attending outpatient appointments and supported staff in the playrooms. Glasgow Recovery Communities, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. The aftercare following recovery from alcohol and drug misuse and addiction is crucial to maintain abstinence and reduce the rate of relapse. These volunteers in recovery from drugs and alcohol are dedicated to helping others live healthier, safer lives by providing aftercare and support to more than 500 people a week. Point and Sandwick Trust Volunteers, Western Isles. More than 40 local volunteers deliver a crucial befriending and meal delivery service to vulnerable people living in the remote villages on the Isle of Lewis. Without their caring and hard work, many people in Point and Sandwick would have struggled to source food, eat a hot meal, and fight loneliness because of lockdown. Announcing the worthy winner of the Volunteers Award is Interim Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, John Conaghan, CBE. So this is an award um, which is for volunteers. And um, can I just say at the outset, um, a heartfelt thanks to all of those who give so much for the greater good for all across the entire health and social care system. Without the time that you spend in volunteering and providing those services, they would not exist in the form that they do. So this particular award goes to a set of volunteers where they value the contribution of all, uh, where most of this effort is run, led and organised by local people, where they really truly adopt an inclusive approach and where we consider that they are passionate about what they believe in and what they deliver. So it gives me great pleasure for this year to say that the winners are Glasgow Recovery Community. Thanks very much indeed, John. And I'm delighted to say that the Glasgow Recovery Communities, Carol Meehan is with us. Carol, congratulations to you, uh, the Volunteers Award, uh, and you've got some other people there as well. But I'll go firstly to you, Carol. That is amazing. They do a tremendous amount of work supporting people to get into recovery across Glasgow. It's been a really difficult time. Um, well done to all of you. Glasgow has one of the highest drug and alcohol related deaths in Scotland and in the UK. We currently have approximately 10,000 people in treatment and care. Crucial to their recovery is aftercare, providing support for people to maintain their recovery. And we have about 100 volunteers across Glasgow 
with lived experience who are passionate about helping people. They have been involved in the development of drug and alcohol services in Glasgow, and they've had a lot of influence on the Scottish Government's strategy, rights, respect and recovery. COVID-19 has brought significant challenges for all of us, but they've gone above and beyond supporting people to maintain their recovery. So I think I'll pass you over now to Rory, who can tell us a bit more about what they've been doing. Hi, Hi, my name is Rory. I'm, uh, I'm also in recovery and I, I, I volunteer with the Northwest Recovery Community. But since the start of the pandemic, citywide recovery communities have pulled together to keep the vital connection needed for ongoing recovery to exist. Feeling a part of is definitely something that is really important, especially for myself and my recovery. Thank you, Rory. And we'll hear from either Margaret or Anna now. Is that me next, or Anna? Uh, I, on you go. <laughs> right. Well, social interaction is, is a key part for people's physical health and mental health. Um, obviously, at the start of the, the pandemic, people couldn't get out to go to gym and couldn't meet up face to face. Um, so right away, as a one citywide, we, we set up online groups. Um, the volunteers really, really stepped up during this time, right at the beginning as well. We were getting people to the volunteers were going out and meeting people, socially distancing um, outside, people that were really struggling with their mental health and needed that one, one that couldn't speak about it in groups and stuff. Obviously, we knew that families uh, were struggling as well. They were stuck at home 24 hours a day, people with children. Um, children were getting fed up. So we set up homework groups online um, and it was basically to try and keep the kids occupied and take a wee bit of pressure off the parents and families. Um, so we did that, arts and crafts stuff and like, online activities for them, trying to raise the, the spirits up a bit. Now one of, one of our cafes is, is opened back up following government guidelines, um, the women's one. And I was privileged to be a part of that, um, which we've seen people that it was their first time at the house after since March, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, which was great for their mental health and their physical health, because it was getting them out again. Incredible amount of effort on behalf of everybody. Well done. And Anna, just a few words from you as well before we move on uh, to the next hi, award. Uh, hi. Margaret and Rhodes have already covered, basically, uh, what I was going to say. But like, when COVID came in and lockdown uh, got put on is there was a lot of fear in the recovery communities because the opposite of addiction is connection. And the volunteers realise that being in the cafes, being in the initiatives and the drop-ins and getting support to help us with uh, our addiction and the fear of that was how we're going to continue that. But us as communities and the volunteers and the staff really stepped up uh, and overnight we came up with an online programme. Very quickly and all, we recognised that no the volunteers and participants had devices or had uh, phone access or internet but we stepped up, managed to get devices and phones and uh, data and that out to people so that they could keep connected in uh, our programme. We're volunteers, me myself, I completed COSCA uh, counselling on Zoom uh, and other volunteers have started their own COSCA counselling course. They're continuing to work on their SVQs and social care. And I was very, very lucky. I've been with the communities for a year. I'm very, very passionate about it. Uh, and I've managed to secure employment. Anna, uh, Margaret and Rory, can I thank you for that insight into what you've done and your passion and your enthusiasm and your hard work has come through to all of us uh, that are going to be watching this. Uh, thank you so much for what you've done. I wish you the best in your own recovery and the uh, people that you're helping in their recoveries as well. And that's why you are the volunteer winners 2020. Well done to you guys. Yeah! Young Achiever Award is up next. Let's see who the finalists are. Young Achiever Award. Colin McGill, Porter, St John's Hospital, NHS Lothian. Colin completed the West Lothian Project Search, which supports youngsters with disabilities to secure employment. 
Colin, who has a learning disability, got his job as a hospital porter just before lockdown. Realising transport would be an issue, he moved out of his family home and in with his father to be closer to his work. Sophie Ross, call handler, NHS 24. Sophie turned her life around after losing her mother suddenly six years ago. Despite working unsociable hours as a call handler in a stressful, demanding role, she always puts others first. Her fundraising for charities and volunteering roles reflects her strong moral principles. She discusses her experiences to help others and let others know that if she can change her future, then they can too. Bernadetta Trasca, clinical support worker, Edinburgh Health and Social Care Partnership. Bernadetta completed the Princess Trust Get Into Healthcare employability programme for young people interested in working in healthcare who don't have traditional entry-level education. Despite having limited English and a young child, her commitment and enthusiasm won her a modern apprenticeship in a palliative care ward where she quickly became a valued member of the team. The Minister for Children and Young People, Mary Todd, MSP, has the honour of announcing the Young Achiever winner. Hi there, it's an absolute pleasure to join you all for this wonderful award ceremony. I want to congratulate everyone who was shortlisted in what was an extremely strong field of really high quality nominations. And I am delighted to announce that the Young Achiever Award goes to Colin McGill. Well done. Thanks very much, Mary. And we are joined on screen now by Colin McGill, one of the nominees, and he's going to move from nominee to winner. Congratulations, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you. You are the Young Achiever 2020. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm a bit surprised, but good. Well, you're very welcome. Um, tell us a wee bit about yourself and what you do. Uh, uh, not much. <laughs> I can't even think of anything now. Uh, I'll just uh, pretty much spend my time with my family and work at the hospital, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, you've got a lovely smile on your face, Colin. I'm so pleased that, you, you. that you've won. It obviously means a lot to you. Um, uh, anybody you'd like to, to mention uh, today? I would like to thank the Project Search team for nominating me for it. So... I'm very happy that they uh, actually thought about me for this, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you've steadied the camera now, Colin, to be honest. I was, I was getting a wee bit seasick there. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm lucky I've got somebody working a camera for me. But, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, look, we're going to get the trophy over to you. Uh, it comes with our thanks for what you do and our appreciation uh, and I think it's a tremendous achievement, and that's covered by the name of it, our Young Achiever Award 2020. Colin McGill, many congratulations, Colin. Well done. Thank you. Now, 2020 is the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife, and plans were in place to have a huge worldwide celebration of our nurses and midwives, and then COVID-19 struck. Tonight, we have an opportunity to shine a light in this important year on the work of our nurses and midwives. Let's take a look. I'm incredibly proud to call myself a nurse. Nurses across Scotland save lives through their compassion and their skill and their dedication. And it truly is a privilege to touch the lives of people right across our country, across our islands and our cities. I am so proud to be able to say that I am a midwife in Scotland. And sometimes it's very easy to forget in the busyness of our everyday work what a privilege that actually is. I would like to thank each and every nurse and student nurse across Scotland for their dedication, their commitment and their professionalism and all the work they're doing in these difficult and challenging times. The COVID-19 pandemic brings many challenges. And so I want to say a heartfelt thanks to all of you. 
to those in clinical practice, to those of you in education, to the researchers, and to the midwifery managers and leaders, thank you. Thank you. Let's now have a look at the finalists in the Nurse Award. Nurse Award. Nicole Anderson, Clinical Nurse Advisor, Flow Centre, Ashley Ainsey Hospital, NHS Lothian. During the pandemic, Nicole continued to work long hours at the Flow Centre, which supports the transition of patients between adult acute sites. She ensured that patient pathways were all up to date and correct and provided clinical support to non-clinical staff members. Nicole also worked extra hours helping GPs at the COVID-19 hub. Jenny Manson, Community Children's Nurse, The Willows, Children, Young People and Family Centre, NHS Dumfries and Galloway. Over the last two years, Jenny has been involved in delivering end-of-life care to two children who died and is currently supporting at least one other family with a child with declining health. Jenny has demonstrated time and time again that she always puts her patients and their families first. Gillian Wiley, Paediatric ECMO Coordinator, Royal Hospital for Children, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. In children with severe lung disease, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation ECMO, can take over the function of the child's lungs when other methods fail. Gillian developed the training of ECMO specialists and raised standards. She led on the development of standardized anticoagulation pathways, which reduce the need for blood products for children who need ECMO, minimizing complications. Presenting the Nurse Award from category sponsor Unison Greater Glasgow and Clyde is Professional Officer Una Proven. It is an honour for Unison Greater Glasgow and Clyde community and voluntary sector to sponsor this prestigious nursing award. Unison believe all workers in the NHS, social care, voluntary sector all contribute equally to patient care. We are all one team. This year with COVID has been especially challenging, but all involved have excelled and gone that extra mile. And of course, let's not forget the marvellous support given by the public, which meant a lot to us all. But today is about nursing and the dedicated individual who demonstrates initiative and the passionate drive to increase knowledge and expertise in their chosen field. It is therefore with great pleasure I announce the winner of the 2020 Nursing Award. It goes to Jenny Manson. Thanks very much indeed, Una. And we are joined by Jenny Manson. Jenny, I don't know if you heard that or not, but you are the winner of the Nurse Award 2020. I am not. You blooming are. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, wow. Seriously? There is somebody, that is the epitome of gobsmacked. Jenny, um, oh. I mean, what a story it is. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, but listen, I think we all might get a bit emotional at this stage because oh. when you sign up to do a job like you do, I guess you get trained for things that you hope you never have to put into action. But this is Absolutely. one where you clearly had to. Um, yeah. So many people will be just full of praise for you and your colleagues, but you especially for this one. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh. I don't know what to say, really. Well, I was going to say, do you want to say something? I just want to say <laughs> that I'm totally humbled and gobsmacked, actually. You know, I don't do my job to win awards. Um, I do my job for the children and family that I look after. And for them to have made this nomination... And from other colleagues, it's been quite something, actually. 
well, you say you don't do it to win awards, uh, but but you have done. And you know, you, you're the same as everybody else in the NHS. Uh, you do it because it's your job. It's what you signed up to do. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can hardly find the words to congratulate you enough. It is such oh. a, an incredible thing that you have done uh, and a very worthy winner. Um, uh, oh, gosh. Now, these are, as everybody keeps saying, strange circumstances, but I hope that you manage yes. to celebrate somehow because you should celebrate. I will celebrate. I will celebrate with the family that nominated me and um, this is for them and for families like them and the children that I look after. Um, sadly, the little girl died last week that I was looking after. So we've got got the funeral and everything to go, pack, to go, go, go through now. However, this just means so much to me. It means that a family going through the worst possible thing in their life took the time to nominate me and that is an absolute privilege. Would you absolute please, privilege. I was going to say, would you please pass on our sincerest uh, gratitude to them for do. nominating you and to pass on our condolences as well for their loss. Absolutely. Jenny, I will. many, many congratulations again. A wonderful achievement. <gasps> Thanks so much. You're oh, welcome. You so You're much. so welcome. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs>
Uh, and this is Hazel oh behind you as well, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, yeah, congratulations to you both and to the whole team. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. my God. Now, we heard a wee bit in the VT about what you do, but you might want to expand on that. Well, tell me about oh. your... Uh, tell, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> if you can. If you can. You can't yes. do that. <laughs> that's great. I, I can't even hand you a trophy. That's, that's the sad thing about this. But you will get one. But tell me a wee bit more about what you've been doing, Margaret. Oh, um, well, um, as a longest serving member of the team and the oldest, um, I've been nominated as the spokesperson for the team. And you've actually made me breathless, Fred. Um, well, I, I, um, I have been known to do that in the other occasion, <laughs> thank you. You have actually, because I've seen you. I've had to pay before to speak to you. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, the project has been around for a long time. The, the team's been around for a long time. Um, I've been involved personally um, as a drug liaison midwife since way back in 2003. And Hazel's been the other member of my team that's a long serving member who came about 10 years ago. Um, we, the, the, Our team was set up to support uh, women who were affected by substance misuse in pregnancy. And... Um, Substance misuse never comes on its own. It comes with a variety of other um, complications and, yeah. um, you know, vulnerabilities. And it it was recognised that actually a lot of women have a lot of these challenges and vulnerabilities without substance misuse being in the in the equation. So uh, the the team was expanded to have the family liaison team who um, who work in the VIP um, team as well, and they support people with vulnerabilities such as domestic violence, um, very young teenage pregnancies, um, mental nice. learning disabilities, significant um, mental health problems, and um, the, the mental health side of things became greater and greater and greater. We've seen more and more referrals for that. So. Just at the right time, we actually developed the third um, part of the team, and that's um, the perinatal mental health midwife team. And Katie joined us just over a, a year ago, and um, I'm still shaking. She actually um, <laughs> she she came um, to our team just at the right time, just before COVID started, because we all see how much COVID has had an impact on patients' mental health, but also the staff. Mm -hmm. So she's been a super help for us and within the team. Um, and, um, you know, she's been a great further resource for us to have. Um, I'm so blown away. Uh, that, well, <laughs> quite right, because it's a fantastic achievement uh, for you and the rest of the team. And as I said, we will get a trophy to you and you've got the ideal place to put it, just on those cabinets behind you. But they're an absolute, <laughs> it's an absolute shambles over your shoulder there. Get it tidied up, Margaret, and you can put, put the award in it uh, next time, OK? Congratulations to you. Pass, pass on our best wishes to everybody involved in the team. Thank well you. done. In, in, in honour of the team, I'm so delighted to accept this because I know how hard the team members work in this team. Thank you so much. That's great. Lovely way to finish. Thanks. Thank well you. done again, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>Our next award is for Allied Health Professional. To introduce the award is Chief Allied Health Professions Officer for Scotland, Carolyn MacDonald. I am delighted to introduce this award, which recognises the incredible contribution made by Allied Health Professionals to the health and well-being of the people of Scotland. Through the breadth of our skill set, our 14 professions work collaboratively, reaching out across health and social care, housing, education, voluntary and independent sectors. We assess, diagnose, treat and discharge people, enabling those who need our services to live their lives to the full at home, in education and at work. The quality of this year's nominations was outstanding and you were all worthy winners. Let's take a look at the finalists in this category. Allied Health Professional Award. Alex Kane, Specialist Paediatric Physiotherapist, West Centre, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Alex saw how children with complex neurological conditions, such as cerebral palsy, need 24-hour postural care equipment. While they had specialised chairs and standing frames, they didn't have support in their beds, causing them pain. Alex realised it was important that their physiotherapists were well-trained and had different sleep system kits for families to try. Sam Sterling, Lead Physiotherapist, Medicine for the Elderly, Western General Hospital, NHS Lothian. 
Sam has ensured elderly patients remain mobile in hospital by helping to prevent muscle wasting. She educated staff on the benefits of keeping patients active so they would be less likely to end up in a care home. Sam also set up a clothing bank to encourage patients who only had hospital gowns to get out of bed. Paul Watson palliative and end-of-life care project paramedic, Scottish Ambulance Service. Paul is recognised for the phenomenal work he has done in improving the Scottish Ambulance Service's response to palliative and end-of-life care patients. He developed guidance on the use of just-in-case medicines and on the administration of morphine to end-of-life patients by paramedics. He also set up links with hospices and palliative care services to support crews. To announce the winner from category sponsor Storm ID, developer of the Linus platform, is founder Paul McGuinness. Good evening, everyone. Storm ID is uh, delighted to be involved in the Scottish Health Awards, and I'm delighted to announce this evening that the Allied Health Professional Award goes to Alex Kane. Well, this is a great award, Allied Health Professional, and we have the winner with us, Alex Kane. Congratulations, Alex, you are the winner. Oh, right, OK, ah, wow. Yes. Uh, we've had some wonderful uh, moments tonight, you know, when people have been surprised by uh, the fact that they've won the award, and you, you look like you're genuinely, <laughs> genuinely touched. Yeah, genuinely touched. I just do my job. Just wow. If I could tell you how many times over the years I've been doing these awards, I hear people saying, I'm just doing my job. You know, that it's, it's hundreds. You're all the same. And you in particular, I mean, what you do, postural care for, for kids that are at home in, you know, dreadful uh, circumstances. It's, it's admirable. I'm in awe. I'm in awe of you. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's the families you should be in awe of. They do all the work. We just help them. You see, modesty, modesty as well. That's another thing about this. Um, is there anybody else involved with your work that you'd like to mention just now? Yeah, we've got we've got a huge team. I couldn't have done it without so many people. Um, so really, I was just connecting, connecting the dots and helping a lot of people make a difference to a lot of children. So we've got all of the team, all the physiotherapy team, all the physios helped me and got behind me. Um, and the company reps that we worked with to provide the sleep systems, they all came on board. They were so generous, um, provided training, free of charge for us, helped upskill us, um, and um, helped us put the, the systems together. And then the Equip You store, which is the um, store that we work with, that um, came on board so that we could make sure that the systems were cleaned, um, and were stored correctly and that we were covering all the health and safety regulations and, and the children using them and providing this service. And I just, yeah, so many people came on board and thought it was a good idea and went out of their way to make it happen. And it really couldn't, yeah, it was a big team effort to make it all come together. We've really seen that a lot in 2020, haven't we? People coming together in, you know, situations of extreme hardship. Yeah, we have indeed, and um, I think that's just what it's just what we have to do. And communicating and bringing more teams together, and everybody learning about each other's role, and just a shared understanding that at the bottom, of, in the centre of it all, is just a child and a family that needs our services, and we need to do what we can to make sure we provide that for them. Well, you mentioned the families right at the start, saying it's them that should be congratulated. But if I can take a moment just to say on behalf of all the families, on behalf of everybody involved with these awards, many congratulations. You are the 2020 Allied Health Professional winner, Alex Kane. Well done, Alex. <laughs> We now move on to the Integrated Care Award, sponsored by Healthcare Improvement Scotland. Let's see who the finalists are. Integrated Care Award. The Edinburgh Collective. The COVID response from addiction recovery services, homeless healthcare and third sector partners, NHS Lothian. 
The pandemic had significant implications for the homeless and those with drug and alcohol issues as it imposed social isolation and reduced the delivery of health services. Edinburgh Alcohol and Drug Partnership led a collaboration of the NHS, third sector, social work and housing to reduce the harm suffered by those vulnerable people. Sexual Health and Bloodborne Virus Managed Care Network, eliminating Hepatitis C, NHS Tayside. The team aims to bring the best quality treatment and care for Hepatitis C, HCV. Those most affected are people who use drugs, usually the most stigmatised and marginalised in society. The team's approach, using multiple methods and care pathways, has turned around the lives of many people and is now a blueprint for HCV elimination. The Health and Social Care Alliance Scotland The Lynx Worker Programme is based in 34 GP practices across Glasgow's most deprived communities. It provides one-to-one -one support as well as access to community support. Around 3,500 people who were shielding were supported in many ways, such as access to food and prescriptions and telephone befriending. Chair of Healthcare Improvement Scotland, Carol Wilkinson, has the honour of announcing this year's winner. Healthcare Improvement Scotland is very pleased to sponsor the Integrated Care Award. This is our second year of sponsorship. Working in partnership and jointly across services helps to make sure people receive the right service at the time they need it most. Healthcare Improvement Scotland supports services that tackle inequalities and are delivered to those who are hard to reach and are often stigmatised. The winner of this year's award fulfils this, and so I am great pleasure in announcing the winner of the Integrated Care Award is Sexual Health and Bloodborne Virus Managed Care. Well done to all of you. Well, thanks very much indeed, Carol. And I'm delighted to say that we have uh, someone from the winning team uh, up in Dundee. John Dillon is with us. John, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much, Fred. It's a pleasure to find out that we've won. That's excellent news. Uh, uh, on behalf of the whole team, we're very grateful for the panel and the, the judgment. Well, uh, you've got the, the task of letting the whole team know in due course. Uh, okay. is, and, you know, given that it is a team, I, I'm not expecting you to single anybody out, but uh, could you can confirm for us that it was a real team effort? Yes, I mean, we've, uh, it's a team across many different parts of the health service and across the voluntary sector and our council colleagues as well. So it's very much an integrated team uh, that we've been working over the last... 12 years or so together in an integrated fashion to try and improve services around hepatitis C, reaching those most disadvantaged parts of our society to bring people towards a cure. And then in the last few years with the new therapies for hep C, that the pace of that has picked up and we've now been able to offer a lot more. And because we're crossing boundaries, we're able to bring other services in to help the people that we're trying to reach. So it's become integrated both across those boundaries and across other services for helping people. Did you have any instances where members of the team had to maybe divert their attention away to more COVID-19 related matters? Yes, yeah, certainly because many of our team work in infectious diseases, many of them were redirected to COVID. Um, those that are focused more about the health of people who use drugs, all our services were closed down in the first few weeks of the outbreak. So they, um, worked with council workers who were delivering food parcels to move out and to start to deliver therapy through the, the mobile vans, et cetera, that we had in the early days of the COVID epidemic. And then as we worked with our colleagues in pharmacy to find new ways of delivering opiate therapy along with um, hep C therapy. So it was a, a, a period of rapid change and adaption of trying to keep everyone safe, but trying to keep the important things going as well. John, thanks very much for joining us and I'll leave you to uh, pass on our congratulations and best wishes to everybody involved in the Integrated Team uh, award-winning team. Thank you very much indeed, Fred, and thank you to everyone else that, uh, that selected us. Thanks very much. Well done again. Next award is Care for Mental Health. Let's have a look at the finalists. Care for Mental Health Award. Dr. Sharon Mulhern, Consultant Clinical Psychologist, NHS Ayrshire and Arran. 
Sharon set up staff wellbeing suites in acute sites at the beginning of the pandemic, giving access to psychological, psychiatric and peer support. She ensured staff had appropriate information about self-care and psychological first aid and were referred to the psychology service she set up for COVID-19. NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde esteem early intervention for psychosis service. This is a community mental health service for people aged 16 to 35 years old, experiencing their first episodes of psychosis. The four teams work with people for up to two years, offering medication, practical support, family support and psychological therapy before they move on to being cared for by community health teams or their GP. NHS 24's mental health team, NHS 24. The team had to scale up during the pandemic to respond to increased demand. From acute interventions over the telephone to the provision of web chat, digital self-help guides and cognitive behavioural therapy, the team play a key role in supporting patients in distress and improving access to mental health services. Announcing the 2020 winner is Minister for Mental Health, Claire Hockey, MSP. This year has been a year like no other, and we've seen innovation in mental health delivery of care that has moved to digital online platforms and telephone services. And for that reason, I'm delighted to announce that the Mental Health Care Award goes to NHS 24's mental health team. Thanks very much indeed, Claire, and I'm delighted to say we are now joined by members of the NHS 24 mental health team who are the category winners. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, we've got Steph there. Steph, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and I guess it, this is the hidden pandemic, isn't it? The mental health problems that we've had in the country since COVID-19 really took a grip. How have things been for you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, we've really expanded the service that we've got. So we're now delivering that 24 hours a day. Um, and we have seen a real increase in the number of calls coming in. So, you know, we recognise it's a really valuable service. And tell, tell me, who are, who are the colleagues you've got with you so carefully positioned behind you? <laughs> without, without moving, Fred. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so I have Gail McGregor on my right here, who is our Head of Clinical Services in um, Cardonald, and she looks after the overall responsibility for the mental health team. The lady behind me is Mandy McKay, uh, and she's, she's the real workhorse. She's, she's really <laughs> delivered this thing on the ground. Um, we've got Janice Houston, who is our Associate Director of uh, Nursing and Operations. So it was all her idea. Uh, and, and, and Alistair Quinney, who's our Associate Director of Operations as well. Um, and he actually makes everything work properly. Uh, you're all very vital parts of this uh, magnificent machine. Well done to all of you. I was scribbling the notes down there. Gail, uh, Mandy, Janice and Alistair. I, I can't remember which one of them was the clothes horse. Sorry, workhorse, workhorse, my apologies. <laughs> Terrible handwriting. Uh, but listen, do you know what is lovely is to see you all smiling. Uh, I hope that you pass on our best wishes to everybody else that's involved with your team. Um, and I can't tell you just how much we, as the lay people, appreciate what you have done and continue to do for mental health. Thank you, we're delighted. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations again. Uh, that's our Care for Mental Health category winners. Uh, for 2020. Well done. Yay! We now move on to the Healthier Lifestyle Award. Here's the finalists. Healthier Lifestyle Award. Fiona Baxter, Senior Support Worker, Learning Disabilities, Dumbarton Day Centre, West Dumbartonshire Health and Social Care Partnership. Fiona has dedicated her own time and expense to train as a qualified yoga teacher with specialist training in alleviating stress and anxiety and in helping people with special needs. She has supported employee well-being throughout the pandemic by providing therapeutic yoga classes as well as rebound therapy to people with learning disabilities. West of Scotland Adult CF Physiotherapy Team, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. 
The team delivered online exercise and education to patients with cystic fibrosis who were shielding during the pandemic. They give patients the opportunity to exercise in a safe environment with activities tailored to people with cystic fibrosis who have respiratory problems or lack confidence in their ability to exercise. Keep well team, health improvement department, Coatbridge Health Centre. The team goes into the community to meet people who experience health inequalities and who don't readily engage with mainstream services. They help marginalised people, those who are homeless or at risk of homelessness, deaf, blind people, gypsy travellers, individuals in the justice system, carers, black ethnic minority groups and people who misuse substances. Stracker Hub, Kate Payton, practice nurse, Stracker Medical Practice, Ian Asher, Angela Wilson, Heather Greer. The Community Hub, a collaboration between the practice nurse and members of the patient participation group, has had an incredible effect on the fitness and well-being of older and isolated people, giving them the chance to live active, independent, healthy and happy lives in their own homes for as long as possible. Presenting the Healthier Lifestyle Award as Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, Joe Fitzpatrick, MSP. Hello, I'm delighted to join you this evening. This award recognises the fantastic work being carried out around Scotland to support people to make a change in their lives and in turn has led them to have a more active, healthier and fulfilling life. The quality of nominations were outstanding but I'm delighted to announce that the Healthier Lifestyle Award goes to the Stracher Hub. Thanks very much for making the announcement, Joe. And I'm delighted to say from Stracher Hub, we have Heather Greer. Heather, congratulations, you're the winner. Oh, <laughs> we have worked very hard on our hub since 2016, Fred. Um, we looked at um, what we could do to help older people here in particular, but actually we've developed into, into getting the younger people involved in exercise, looking after their health, um, social isolation, breaking that down, giving some respite for carers who have got a big workload, particularly just now. And uh, so we're absolutely delighted we cannot believe it <laughs> well no it's, you're a very worthy winner and of course you know a healthy lifestyle is really vital to continued good health isn't it absolutely um we've had fantastic support from our local gp surgery um dr cool and his team have been supportive of this venture from day one and tell me you know when we we're looking back at the the main part of the lockdown when exercise was uh, allowed from one hour to two, you know, that was a great relief to people, wasn't it? To get out and about for a wee bit longer. It absolutely was. But what we did was we have got our instructor, whose name is Angela Wilson, and she made up some exercises. And we have been phoning round all our people every week, all of us, a, a small team of us, four of us, to make quite sure that they're well, that they're not lonely, and that they've been doing their exercises because it's so good for mental health. Yeah, I mean, I loved getting out and about. I was fortunate I could get into my own garden, but even with that, we would still go a walk with the dogs whenever we possibly could. Um, and then you could also go trekking and kayaking. I don't know what it's oh. like where you are, but I mean, the, the canal at An Annie's Land was rammed with kayaks. I live in Loch Fine, Fred. Uh -huh. And oh, well, Stucker is on the coast of Loch Fine, but I have seen people out in kayaks here and a lot of people walking, particularly walking their dogs. Yeah. Well, stay safe, stay healthy. Congratulations on the award and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you. Well done, Heather. Up next is Leader of the Year, sponsored by NHS Education for Scotland. Let's hear about the finalists. Leader of the Year Award. Paula Burks, Community Support Manager, Fife Community Support Service, Fife Health and Social Care Partnership. Paula is an outstanding leader dedicated to ensuring a high quality service is delivered. 
During the pandemic, she remobilized the workforce to meet the critical needs of the community, switching overnight to a new way of working to allow vulnerable people to be cared for in their own homes. Dr. Julie McElwain, GP, Granton Medical Practice. Dr. McElwain rose to the challenge of leading her GP practice during the pandemic, as well as caring for patients with COVID while protecting staff. She made sure patients with other urgent needs were also cared for. She also took charge of the pastoral care of staff who were facing the challenges of home working and were at risk of stress and burning out. Catherine Shaw, lead unscheduled care practitioner, remote and rural support team, North and West Coast, NHS Highland. Catherine played a pivotal role in setting up and delivering the COVID-19 response for Sky and Fort William. Despite losing a member of her own family to the illness, she supported the poor tree team during an incredibly stressful time, including when there was an outbreak at the local care home. Announcing the winner from NHS Education for Scotland, we have the chair, David Garbutt. Firstly, can I think, thank all the finalists for this award for all the leadership they have shown over the last very difficult year. This has been a tremendous test for us all in Scotland and the leadership you have shown has been remarkable. My congratulations to all of the finalists for the difference you have made to the people in Scotland. And I'm delighted to announce that the Leader of the Year Award goes to Catherine Shaw. We are joined by Leader of the Year, Cathy Shaw. How does that sound, Cathy? It sounds absolutely wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Cathy, I would imagine that uh, the, the safety of everyone was principal in your thoughts uh, when you were putting the, the team together for, uh, you know, for the for what you, what you all did up in Portree and Skye and surrounding areas. Uh, must have been tough, though. It, it certainly was. Um, I joined the team three years ago, and um, it was having difficulty kind of getting off the ground. And um, so we took it from the ground and started building it from there. And essentially, it was really about providing the community with um, a level of comfort in the care that they received um, so knowing that they had an equitable service and that we that we were there for them so we had to bring not only the team on board but also the community yeah did you have a feeling ever that you know remote and rural areas were being not neglected but maybe not getting the same attention that uh, cities and you know urban urbanization areas got yeah well i came up to the highlands from the west midlands um, a, a huge city, Birmingham, and saw the level of service that they had, albeit it was rammed and it was very difficult to get in. The remote areas had little, but what they could ha access, they accessed quicker. So it was a, it really was about um, getting our faces out there and letting the community know that we were there and that we wanted to provide this service for them. We and had to think differently. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. You would, it's an entirely different concept. But uh, yeah. now that we're in, you know, potentially much better, uh, you know, circumstances going forward, do you see that you'll still have challenges uh, in, the, in the months and years ahead? Um, yes, there's always a challenge when you work remote and rural. It's, it's about, um, we've recruited now, so we've gone from a team of, two or three to a team of 16 um, but it's about retention now and keeping people um, fresh and educated and interested in what they're doing and, and not feeling isolated. And Cathy I know from the, the notes that I got my briefing notes that you had personal tragedy yourself during the pandemic um, I wanted to just add my condolences to you for that for your loss um, <laughs> And I hope that you pass on our best wishes to everybody that's involved with your team. But as you as leader and leader of the year, many, many congratulations. 
Thank you very much, Fred. I appreciate it. The Doctor Award is up next. Let's take a look at the finalists. Doctor Award. Dr. Andrew Eccleston, Consultant Paediatrician, Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary, NHS Dumfries and Galloway. Dr. Eccleston has been nominated by the mother of a nine-year-old girl who he treated since she was born with complex needs. Thanks to his unstinting efforts, her quality of life was improved. Last year, he gained approval for a drug that extended her life by a few precious months, reducing her suffering and giving her more time with her family. Dr. Pauline Gross, Consultant in Acute Medicine, Glasgow Royal Infirmary, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. When the pandemic started, Pauline set up and led a COVID-19 high dependency unit at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary, which treated more patients with non-invasive ventilation than the rest of the country combined. Many people survived this terrible illness because of her selfless hard work, her devotion to duty and her leadership skills. Dr. Mary Murdoch, on-call medical physician, Western Isles Hospital, NHS Western Isles. During the pandemic, there was a shortage of locum consultant physicians. Dr. Murdoch stepped up to be on-call and support junior doctors. She also ran a colleague's cardiac arrest team when he died suddenly, looking after his patients, as well as being on-call 24 hours a day for the following three days. To announce the winner, we have Interim Chief Medical Officer Gregor Smith. 2020 has been a quite extraordinary year and I've watched with admiration and real pride as colleagues across the country have risen to the challenges posed by COVID-19. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for the way that you've gone about this. Tonight, we're here to recognise the particular role of our nominees and it's with great pleasure that I announce the winner of the Doctor Award for 2020 is Pauline Gross. Congratulations, Pauline. Well, thanks very much to Gregor for making that announcement. And we are now joined by the Doctor of the Year 2020, Pauline Gross. Pauline, congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, I, I'm looking there. I, I don't recognise the ceiling. I don't know if that's in your house or whether it's um, if you're still at work. But uh, tell us a wee bit about what you do, Pauline. Yeah, so I'm at work. Um, I'm an acute physician at Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Um, I've worked here for over 10 years. And um, over the past six months, I've been leading the high dependency unit, the medical high dependency unit, um, where we've been admitting patients with covid um, specifically for a treatment known as non-invasive ventilation. Now, we're going to have people watching this ceremony that really don't know what ICU or ITU uh, has been like during the pandemic. Can you give us briefly a, a, a summary of just what it's been like for you, your colleagues and indeed the patients? Yeah, so critical care um, kind of encompasses high dependency and intensive care. Um, and both uh, ITU and HDU have been incredibly busy over the past six months. Um, initially, kind of particularly sort of April, May time, we had the initial surge in cases. And then more recently, over the past six weeks, we've had a, a second surge in cases. Um, it's really involved quite an incredible amount of, of work. Um, we have had to open new units. Um, we've had to double our high dependency unit capacity. We've had to form huge new nursing teams and amalgamate different specialties in order to deliver the care that we we think is best for the patients um, and really just kind of change our, our whole way of working in, in many aspects. I've said to others uh, this evening that, you know, this is something that you're trained for, but kind of hope that you're never going to have to put into practice. But you have done. Um, you've done a fantastic job and I really hope that you're going to be able to celebrate. I would imagine downtime has been few and far between in 2020. Yeah, I mean, I think like everybody um, involved in healthcare, we've, we've all been incredibly busy during the time at work. Um, obviously, we've been limited in, in what sort of social um, occasions we've been able to celebrate. And um, we've all really just been spending time with our families and friends um, when, when possible, um, when at home. And um, 
and yeah, a lot of a lot of the support we're getting at work is just doing our job, and we've got we've um, or I've got incredible colleagues who have really supported each other incredibly well during this time, um, and I think that's probably been one of the the most important learning things over the past six months is how everybody has supported each other and has really risen to the challenge and um, and really just done whatever has been asked of them, um, and that's kind of in from um, all kind of aspects of, of healthcare workers within the the hospital. I would say that's the common thread that's gone through just about every award this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, Pauline, I think it's a fantastic achievement. I'm only sorry that we can't be in the same room and that you get the trophy to take away with you, mm -hmm. but uh, it'll come. And I hope that, as I said earlier, you do get the chance to celebrate and celebrate properly at some time in the future. Thanks very much. Doctor Thank of the you. Year, Pauline Groves. Thank you very much. We now move on to the Global Citizenship Award. Let's see who the finalists are. Global Citizenship Award. Vary Colley, Consultant Colorectal Surgeon, Western General Hospital, NHS Lothian. Vary helped set up the Uganda Childbirth Injury Charity in 2001 and took over as chair in 2018. She has spent the last 15 years travelling to Uganda to help cure women who sustain dreadful injuries during childbirth, often no more than girls, and who have no access to good obstetric care. Medical Aid for Palestinians Medical Aid for Palestinians, MAP, works for the health and dignity of Palestinians living under occupation and as refugees. These 13 Scottish medics answered the call to support MAP in delivering breast cancer care and medical training in the West Bank and in Gaza, working as volunteers for the last three years. Dr. Sonali Taraftar, consultant ophthalmologist, Nine Wells Hospital, NHS Tayside. Dr. Sonali Taraftar gives up her own time and resources to travel to rural Ethiopia, where there's very little health infrastructure, to provide sight-saving cataract surgery. She works 12-hour days to carry out the life-changing operation that allows people to work again and live independently, no longer needing their families and communities to care for them. Announcing the winner, we have Professor John Brown, CBE, Chair of NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and Chair of NHS Scotland Global Citizenship Programme. Uh, good evening. Uh, before I announce the winner of the Global Citizenship Award, uh, I want to recognise the contribution made by everyone involved in the NHS Scotland Global Citizenship Programme. Uh, there are over 600 people from NHS Scotland who regularly work overseas to improve the healthcare in developing countries. Uh, they in turn are supported by hundreds of people who remain in Scotland. And I want to take this opportunity to thank them all uh, for their contribution to global citizenship. I'm now delighted to announce that the Global Citizenship Award for 2020 goes to Vary Colley from NHS Lothian for her work in Uganda. And I'm delighted to say that we have Vary Coley with us. And Vary, you are the winner, Global Citizenship Award 2020. Many congratulations. How are you? Um, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but very pleased. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I know that you're a surgeon through there in Edinburgh, but uh, this is for your work in Uganda. Can you tell me a wee bit more about it, please? Yeah, of course. Um, I've been going to Uganda regularly for about 20 years. Um, I started with a gentleman, uh, Brian Hancock, who took me and uh, taught me some very specific skills. And I've now built up a team of international and mostly UK-based uh, nurses and doctors that go with me and a team there of nurses and doctors. So it's a very much a collaborative approach of working with our Ugandan colleagues, which has been very rewarding for all of us. Yeah. Now, uh, there has been the, the health impact of COVID-19, but there's also the economic impact, and nobody's feeling that any more than uh, charities. Uh, have you been impacted in that respect? Um, we are, we've, we've, we've still got funding for the work that we've, that we've been doing. And although we would normally have been there around this time, actually, we normally go at the end of October, 
Um, but we've been able to run a service now there because we have the Ugandan team, which has been a huge relief. So I, I think COVID has made us have more patience. We particularly are looking to look after, to help ladies who've been injured in childbirth from not having the help they need to, um, to deliver. And they end up with nasty injuries and need surgery to fix that. It's so quite a specialised uh, thing, which is why it's taken a while to build a really good team here and a team that we can work with there. But I'm so encouraged that they've been able to run a surgical camp without us this time. And uh, we'll look forward to going back again, hopefully in the spring, and seeing how everything is. Well, we wish you all the very best for spring 2021. But in the meantime, once again, huge congratulations for winning this award. Very well done. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Unsung Hero, sponsored by GSK, is our next award. Let's hear about the finalists. Unsung Hero Award. Kathy Cockman, Executive Practice Manager, Glenlivet Medical Practice. Kathy has kept two medical practices and their teams running seamlessly throughout a global pandemic, putting in place the training and resources needed to learn new ways of thinking. She also coordinated the renovation of one of the practice buildings and the successful move back into the new COVID-19 proof premises ahead of schedule. Robert Devine, paramedic, Scottish Ambulance Service. Robert was one day away from retiring after 44 years of service when he died suddenly. He was a mentor to many, sharing his knowledge and experience, as well as giving outstanding service, protecting and preserving the lives of the public. Robert was nominated 16 times by his colleagues, by people who knew him and are both, and by his son and grandson. David Taggart, Category Manager, NHS National Services Scotland. David has worked as a key partner in the delivery of the COVID-19 testing response, ensuring that Scotland receives higher than its population share of testing kits. He worked with companies to manufacture solutions that meant not only did Scotland have a supply, it created a supply for the UK. To announce the winner from category sponsor GSK, we have External Affairs Director George Davidson. Firstly, on behalf of everyone at GlaxoSmithKline, I would like to extend a huge thank you uh, for all the hard work and support given by everyone in our health service. Uh, we're so very fortunate to have such dedicated people looking after us. I'd also like to pass on congratulations to everyone who's been nominated this year for a Scottish Health Award. It really is a tremendous achievement. There can only be one winner, however, and I'm therefore delighted to announce that the Unsung Hero Award for 2020 goes to Robert Devine. Very many congratulations. Thanks very much. And uh, this is a bittersweet moment because this award is being made posthumously. Robert Devine has sadly passed away. We are joined by his daughter, Sharon. Sharon. I said it's bittersweet. The judges clearly wanted to recognise what your father had done in his 44 years of service to the NHS uh, with Scottish Ambulance. Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, congratulations to the family, uh, first and foremost. Um, can I ask you how you're feeling and you know, offer our condolences for the loss of your father? Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're getting there. We just take day by day just now, just slowly kind of realising that He's not here, but we've got a good family, so. I yeah. unfortunately had uh, an experience with uh, ambulance men this year uh, where they came to help me after I'd been in a bad uh, road traffic accident. And I know that they don't just offer health care uh, and look after you, but there's an emotional um, assistance given as well because people are, find themselves in circumstances that they wouldn't normally be in. So uh, I guess that's something that's testament to your dad's great skills. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he just wasn't helping people. He needed some help as well after some certain jobs. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not something that you shut off when you finish the, finish the shift, is it? Oh, no, no, no. There's many a times my mum's had to 
help him through some tears and stuff as well after a certain job. So, yeah, closed doors. He, he needs his help from his family, so he did on some jobs. <laughs> Well, Sharon, I think the judges have made a, a very, very good decision to, to make this award, uh, albeit posthumously. And uh, to you, to your family, and to everybody else that knew Robert, we offer our congratulations as well. Thank you so much. It means so much to us. He would absolutely love getting this, so he would absolutely love it. And he totally deserves it. Thanks very much. And take care of yourself, OK? Thank you so much. Thank you. So we come to the penultimate award for the evening and it's the top team sponsored by Unison Lothian. Here are the finalists. Top team award. Community pharmacy teams across Scotland. Despite lack of PPE at the start of the pandemic, community pharmacists provided access to healthcare throughout lockdown by keeping their pharmacies open. They faced increased demand for medicines and provided ongoing support and reassurance to a frightened public throughout the pandemic, reducing pressure on the rest of the health system. Lomond Ward Nursing Team, Vale of Leven Hospital, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. When the Lomond Ward became the hospital's designated COVID-19 ward, the nursing staff rose to the challenges of managing patients with COVID-19 alongside general medical patients, despite not having a high dependency unit or intensive therapy unit. They focused on providing patient-centered care, ensuring patients and their families were at the center of shared decision-making. Team ECHO, Scottish Ambulance Service Special Operations Response Team. This team are often at significant risk. They were the primary responders in Glasgow when a lone attacker stabbed several victims and was then shot. They did everything they could to preserve the attacker's life and ensured the victims were treated and taken to hospital safely with no loss of life to any victim despite significant injury. Announcing the winner from Unison Lothian, we have senior steward Lee Brown. Unison Lothian Health Branch are once again delighted to be sponsoring the Top Team Award. The NHS is made up of many disciplines, but we are all one team, ordinary people working together under extraordinary circumstances. Tonight, I am delighted to announce that the award goes to community pharmacy teams across Scotland. And I am delighted to say that we have with us some of the top team, the winners of the top team award for 2020. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, Thank you very much, That's uh, great. Can you tell us, we've got Harry, we've got Brian, we've got Alison with us. And I, I just wonder, you know, what have been the main differences in community pharmacy in 2020, please? I'll start with Harry. I certainly it's the, we say the impact of the number of people that came in, their response and resilience, Fred, to what they saw in the number of people and the symptoms and things they were treating. But just a just a tremendous response in a very trying circumstance. And I, you know, Brian, everybody's uh, sadly illnesses would have continued regardless of what was happening with COVID. Did that put extra pressures in the pharmacies? I think it does, and it was, I think, a testament to the pharmacy teams across, across Scotland that they, they stepped up and continued to ensure that those patients um, continue to get the excellent service that they have always received through the pharmacy network. What we've learned through 2020 is that, uh, you know, one way or another, we've had to communicate uh, through technology. And Alison, um, delighted that you're with us here. Uh, I, I, I wish we could see and focus some of the pictures and photos in the back of your wall there. I'm just having to guess what's up there. But, uh, you know, people, you get an insight into people's lives that you never really thought you were going to get just because of the, the stay at home thing. But how have things been for you? Well, I mean, just picking up on the theme of, of what community pharmacy has done in terms of um, how it's responded, I think that um, they, they've looked at developing new services and we've seen the implementation of NHS Pharmacy for Scotland. They've taken to new technologies as we talk about technologies and have now, uh, they're reaching out and offering video consultations to patients. And I think 
the thing for me that is incredible is that just the recognition of how the professionalism, the persistence, the perseverance, and the kind of passion that community pharmacy has shown to enable um, them to continue to, to provide services to the communities they serve, both to members of the public and patients alike um, throughout the whole of the COVID um, crisis. It's been quite, it's a great accolade to them in terms of what they've done. And Harry, um, all being well, it's going to be a very busy year next year. You know, as the vaccines get rolled out, uh, you know, God willing, um, community pharmacy is going to be as busy as ever. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll be there, we'll play a, a part, working with Alison and Brian about a response to that and making sure that the public receive the vaccines that they've got. We'll just play a role where that's appropriate with it. And I'm sure we'll be able to give advice and treatment as we have done over the last, certainly seven, eight months. Well, sadly, we can't make a trophy for everybody that's involved. Uh, there, there will be one winging its way to one of you. Alison, it might go on your wall, uh, just between one of those photos <laughs> or, or Brian. It might replace the, the sculpture that you've got just above your uh, left shoulder there. Or Harry, you've got nothing on the wall there. Maybe you should get it. Uh, absolutely. I'll take I it. probably should be Harry. <laughs> You're right. Okay. So one way or another, an award will make its way to you. Congratulations again to Community Pharmacy Across Scotland. And we've now reached our final award for the night, and it's a new one for 2020. It's the People's Choice Award. To introduce this special award, we have a message from Scotland's National Clinical Director and Chair of the Scottish Health Awards Judging Panel, Professor Jason Leach, CBE. I'm delighted to introduce this special award. The People's Choice Award recognises the extraordinary work of our teams and individuals who have responded so magnificently to the challenge of caring for people during the pandemic, while at the same time innovating to maintain a range of essential services throughout Scotland. We wanted to hear about the people who you believe have worked tirelessly and have gone above and beyond to provide the very best care for the people of Scotland in their greatest time of need. Amongst all these nominations this year, we've seen stories of commitment, dedication, and personal sacrifice. Of course, tonight we're recognising the finalists and announcing a winner. But this year has been exceptional with staff across the whole of our health and social care system, along with carers and volunteers rising to a unique challenge. I'm grateful to every single person who's worked to protect and care for the people of Scotland over the last few months. These stories are not unique tonight. There are thousands of them. Let's take a moment to reflect on the last eight months. Scotland today, like countries across the world, faces an unprecedented challenge. Addressing it will involve the biggest peacetime mission our nation has undertaken in our lifetimes. We must all show solidarity, compassion and kindness for each other. And by doing that, by looking after ourselves, our loved ones and our communities, we can and we will get through this. Good afternoon everybody, thank you for joining us. It's nine o'clock on a Thursday, day six in the house. As at 9 o'clock this morning, there have been 9,409 positive cases confirmed, 18,627, 52,615. So I said to the wife, put the kettle on, I'll go and make a copy for you. Oh, I said to the wife, put the kettle on, I'll go and make a copy for you. And it's sad and it's sweet that we can't leave the street, but something we all have to do. Stay in your home for the NHS Stay in your 
I'm sure you'll agree that they all deserve our recognition and thanks. And of course, we continue to face the ongoing challenge of the pandemic, and we will need them and all of you watching to continue to contribute to this response. Congratulations to all the finalists in the People's Choice category. Thanks very much, Jason. The judges selected seven finalists and then the public had their chance to vote for the winner and over 10,000 of you voted. Let's take a look at our People's Choice finalists. People's Choice Award. Argyle and Butte Caring for People team. During lockdown, a community response made sure more than 3,000 vulnerable people, many of them living in remote areas, had access to food, support, medicine and other supplies. The teams worked with local organisations and around 1,000 volunteers to set up a helpline and arrange for the delivery of around 45,000 food parcels. Dr Pauline Gross, Consultant in Acute Medicine, Glasgow Royal Infirmary, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. When the pandemic started, Pauline set up and led a COVID-19 high dependency unit in Glasgow Royal Infirmary. It treated more patients with non-invasive ventilation than the rest of the country combined. Many people survived this terrible illness due directly to her selfless hard work, devotion to duty and leadership skills. Medical Physics Department, Forth Valley Royal Hospital, NHS Forth Valley. Patients with COVID-19 receiving ventilation treatment often also need renal care. The medical physics team adapted existing medical equipment in the ICU to support and provide enhanced renal care. They installed a pure water system that would work the same way as a renal dialysis unit and modified anaesthetic machines to power ventilators. Point and Sandwick Trust Volunteers More than 40 local volunteers deliver a crucial befriending and meal delivery service to vulnerable people living in their remote villages on the Isle of Lewis. Without their caring and hard work, many people in Point and Sandwick would have struggled to source food, eat a hot meal, and fight loneliness because of lockdown. Carol Scott, community healthcare support worker, NHS Lanarkshire. Carol volunteered to support patients moving from acute care to a care facility before they were discharged. Despite caring for her mother, recently losing her father, and her partner being in recovery from cancer, Carol made sure patients were well cared for. She contracted COVID-19, but kept in contact with colleagues while she was off. Jade Scott, student nurse, healthcare assistant, NHS Fourth Valley. When the pandemic broke out, student nurse Jade stepped up to help the NHS. Jade was on a placement in the intensive care unit at the time, and when that was pulled, she opted to stay on in the NHS, working in a nursing home, while also helping to care for her mother-in-law, who has dementia. Dr. Mun Wu, Associate Specialist, Renal Unit, Inverclyde Royal Hospital, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. When there was a coronavirus outbreak among her 50 renal dialysis patients, Mun Wu set up measures to limit the spread of the disease. The speed with which these measures were introduced by Mun's actions saved lives. She also teamed up with Art in Hospital to provide art classes for dialysis patients. Cherie Gracie, Operations Director of Category Sponsor Alpha Solway, has the honour of presenting tonight's final award. Alpha Solway is proud to sponsor the People's Choice Award 2020 in recognition of all the extraordinary work done by NHS Scotland staff, um, carers, social care staff in responding to the coronavirus pandemic. Congratulations to all seven finalists for their outstanding work and dedication. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the People's Choice Award 2020 is Dr. Mun Wu. Thank you very much indeed, Cherie. And I am absolutely delighted to say that we have the Scottish Health Awards People's Choice winner, Mun Wu. Hi, congratulations. 
Oh my gosh, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you're, you so much. You're genuinely taken aback, aren't you? I, I am totally, totally. Now, I think um, this is an amazing award because it's the people's choice and over 10,000 people voted. Uh, and I just want to offer my sincerest congratulations to you. Is that, it must be so touching. It, it is indeed. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. I wasn't expecting this at all. Um. <laughs> well, can I ask then just about some of the challenges that you've faced in the last year? Um, you know, I, I believe you're involved in dialysis and you had to find new ways of providing dialysis for people because of the pandemic restrictions. Is that right? I look after the dialysis patients at Inverclyde at Royal Hospital and Inverclyde was, a, the community was very badly hit during the first wave of the COVID. And also we had a number of staff who were ill and a member of our staff was a so seriously ill with COVID, she ended up being admitted into intensive care. So that was extremely frightening for staff, patients, and everyone was very demoralized. So, um, you know, we, we worked together as a team and I cannot stress enough how it was very, very much a team effort. And it's really embarrassing to be singled <laughs> out for this award because there were so many people involved with trying to protect the patients. Um, so dialysis patients have to attend for their treatment three times a week. Um, and they, they are a vulnerable group who, who were officially asked to shield um, by the government. And, but instead of having to, instead of being able to stay at home and keep, keep away from potential sources of infection, they had to come three times a week to the hospital. We then therefore did our very best to protect them um, and, and to ensure that infection control measures were in place so that they didn't catch the infection. And you, you said then, you know, at the start that morale was low. Uh, and I hope that this award helps keep morale high going forward, not just for you, but for the team that you mentioned as well. So, Man Wu... You know, I, I, I think, uh, yes, it, it, I, I, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful oh. for this, and it's going to be such a positive impact on the whole team. Well. And it's not just, you know, looking after dialysis patients, it's not just the team in hospital. I cannot thank the nurses, the, the cleaners and the porters and the secretaries, the, everyone involved in the, in, in, in the care of, of the patients. But I cannot thank them enough. And they, they, they are such a wonderful bunch of people. Oh, that's the, very this... kind of you to say that about them. And I'm sure they'll uh, echo what I want to say, which is many congratulations again. I think it's tremendous. The People's Choice Award 2020, Mun Wu. Our congratulations to you and your team. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That brings us to the end of the 2020 Virtual Scottish Health Awards. I'd like to extend my congratulations to all of the finalists and the winners. It's been a tremendous occasion and I'm honoured to have been involved in celebrating your success tonight. I'd like to say a special thank you to a few people. Thanks to our category sponsors, Unison Scotland, Unison Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and Unison Lothian. Also to NHS Education for Scotland, Healthcare Improvement Scotland, the Royal College of Midwives, NHS Research Scotland, and Scottish Health Innovations Limited. To GSK, Storm ID, and Alpha Solway. Also to the Daily Record and the Scottish Government for their continued support of the awards and their commitment to recognising outstanding contributions across NHS Scotland and its partners. To Lisa Linus and the team at Reach Scotland Events and to Jill Malcolmson and the events team at Scottish Government for all their hard work in delivering the awards and the virtual ceremony this evening. To the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport and finally, to the award shortlisters and the judges for their time and commitment to making difficult decisions on finalists and winners. No mean feat in light of the number and calibre of nominations received this year. 
thank you to all who have watched the show this evening. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to the Scottish Health Awards 2021. Thank you and for me, Fred McCauley, good night and stay safe. <laughs>